Hey, what's up guys? It's Elastic Spider here, and in today's video, we are going to be looking at something a little bit different that has been outraging the community all day today, and I wanted to make a video on this. If you are sensitive to some of the things I'm about to say, please click off the video now. Uh, however, this will not be a complete and total rant. Uh, I will just kind of try to go over these topics as civil and as logical as possible and I'm gonna throw in some of my opinions on it so it's not gonna be a extreme rant but it's also not gonna be the greatest I'm not gonna be praising this all that much um, I'm gonna do a little of both let's just say that so uh, clan wars is going to be kicking off pretty soon here uh, let's go over some of the big topics so it's gonna be 77 uh, so if you are familiar with some of the more popular super uh, competitive leagues in World of Warships, they are all 7v7. I'm still fine with this. There has been some proposals for 9v9. Uh, I think 7v7 is a good mixture, so I think that is one thing Wargaming got right, um, and they say that right there. One thing that I do not like, though, um, uh, I, let's go T10 rentals. Uh, T10 rentals, what I think about this is it's not a bad idea. Um, the only problem is that we will be having a lot of potatoes uh, coming in that don't know how to play these ships. Um, now, you do have to have at least uh, T8 to play them. You, like By the time the Clan Wars comes out, you have to play it like a T8 to 10 game, at least one. Uh, I don't know if that includes premium ships, in which case, again, you can still get a lot of potatoes. But uh, I think depending on how this goes, uh, it could be implemented well but as of right now i don't think it's going to be very good and again they do have some very big uh downsides like you can't assign camo uh to these ships and uh, again you can't play them outside of uh anything else besides clan battles i don't know if that includes training room but uh either way you will not get a lot of experience from uh playing these ships the maps uh the pretty nice maps uh I think they could have been balanced a little bit better, um, but I think for the most part uh, they have done a decent job. I'm not going to complain too much about that. Um, one thing I do want to mention, though, is the fact that the T10 versus T8 whole, uh, debacle. Now, in general, I think the whole outrage on both sides is crazy I, i've been reading it all day instead of been instead of i should have been studying for some of my tests that i have but it's just been crazy whether it's on reddit youtube twitter whatever facebook forum i don't go on the forums a lot but the forums too i saw a lot of comments there um my opinion on this is from my experience t10 has always been who can kite the best and unfortunately that leads to very passive gameplay uh and that is something I don't personally like. While T10 is one of my favorite uh, tiers to play, just because I get to play these awesome ships with a lot of amazing consumables like radar, heals, uh, these awesome speed boosts, and these very nasty uh, different ship combinations and ship builds. Um, I've tried several different gearing builds, several different Hindenburg builds, several different Zal builds, and Kaba builds, you know, all these other things. So there is a lot of variety just because you have a lot of things you can uh, test and choose from. However, the thing, though, with that, uh, again, it leads to uh, these very passive gameplays. Whereas T8, uh, you don't have as much variation uh Certain ships have their own little niche, like Atako has got a heal, so it can push a little bit better. Uh, uh, Kutuzov has smoke, so it can so it can kite a little bit better, and it can kind of uh, protect its allies with the smoke. Um, things like a North Cal is a good AA suite, and it's got good guns, and it's so it's a very good pivot point. Um, whereas Amagis are like they're kind of the flankers. Bensons are pretty good in in cap contesting while like even japanese destroyers and german destroyers have seen some use with cap contesting and uh area denial so um that's why i think t8's a little bit more balanced uh whereas at t10 everything has access to everything uh every consumable for the most part and every they've cruises got heal destroyers have heal um battleships have heal battleships you know they have hydro 
cruisers have hydro destroyers have hydro there's not much variety um, which lends itself to non-unique gameplay uh, so in that case I do enjoy uh, playing t10s and randoms but I think for um, for clan battles I don't think it's the right choice I think t8 is uh, and has been the better choice for that um, now, I want to go over the limits. A 1BB limit, uh, one thing I don't one thing I don't like about this is um, if you guys ever play random battles and you have ship composition of like two or three battleships, four or five cruisers, and like four or five destroyers or whatever, uh, basically what I'm saying is not a lot of battleships. It doesn't, it's not that much fun. Um, you're not doing a lot of damage. Most of the time your destroyers are YOLOing and the enemy team has radar or they have uh, superior, superior spotting and it ends up not being fun for anyone because the destroyers can't tor torque battleships. Cruisers just end up uh, shooting other cruisers and destroyers uh, with the occasional battleship and in, for the most part everyone, the destroyers get focused, the cruisers uh, are kind of, they're kind of king uh, in that situation but in general, there's not a lot going for it. And I think that kind of lends itself to the same type of gameplay. And basically, uh, with only one BB, you want to keep that battleship alive because that is really the only thing that is countering your cruisers uh, besides other cruisers. But the way this game is designed is that the battleships are designed to counter cruisers and even destroyers to some extent, um, whereas cruisers aren't necessarily suited to... Uh, to kill and uh, compete against other cruisers. While they can, um, battleships are more designed to do that. Um, so with only one BB, it's just a matter of who can keep their battleship alive longer. And uh, so that's something I don't like. So you'll see a lot of battleships sitting in smoke or hiding behind the island. Again, more passive bow on gameplay. Um, so something with a two BB max, uh, that you won't have that as much. You have a little bit more dynamic gameplay. One battleship can push, two battleships can push, one can kite, one can push, uh, or they can both retreat. Uh, and if you lose one, then you still have one more, and that can still do some damage. So I would say a two battleship max would be uh, a little bit better than one. And that brings up another point. Why is there no cruiser or destroyer limit? Like... To me, this makes no sense. Going back on my point in random battles, it's like, how many times have you been in a battleship or a cruiser, and you just, there's three cruisers around you, and there's nothing you can do. Like, it doesn't make any sense. It completely throws off the balance of the game, especially when you can, there's no nation limit, there's no, uh, like, smoke limit, radar limit. So you could effectively have five Moskvas and have continuous radar and just have two two or three gearings um and base or you could have two gearings um and a battleship and basically you've got infinite radar you've got near infinite smoke with the gearings uh if you run hydro uh because there's no cv i'll get that on a minute in a minute but you can run hydro you're immune you're pretty much immune to torps you know how fun is that that to me that doesn't sound fun you, the enemy team is just getting shot and obliterated by something they can't see, especially with uh, something like radar and the current smoke uh, mechanics in game. So to me, logically, I hope to you logically as well, that does not make a lot of sense because it certainly doesn't to me. So I would also put a three, uh, a maximum of three cap limit on battleship or on uh, cruisers and destroyers. So now the thing that I think most people have been um, have been going crazy about is the no CV uh, in Clan Wars. The thing I I want to say about this is I'm in complete agreement that uh, that we need CVs in the game um, in Clan Wars because when we don't have them, again, it leads to passive gameplay. Uh, contrary to what a lot of people say, uh, it leads to more passive gameplay. When you don't have a CV spotting torpedoes for you uh, or spotting destroyers for you, you don't have to worry about torpedoes. Like it, if you don't have a CV spotting for you, the only thing you have to worry about is uh, you know getting shot from enemy players. Um, of course, torpedoes are always on the back of your mind, but you you can't. It it doesn't make sense for you to uh, worry about torpedoes as much um, because your CV can spot them, you can dodge them. 
but without a CV, then your focus immediately becomes how do I counter these torpedoes? And the way you do that is with Hydro. Um, again, destroyers can spot them to some extent, and that was very loud. Um, but destroyers can counter them to some extent, but certainly Hydro is going to be the number one use. And without CVs, there's no reason to run an AA build, so everyone's going to be running Hydro. They're all going to be running Vigilance, because there's no reason not to. Whereas, like, if there were CVs, then you might have to consider running BFT, or you might have to consider running uh, Superintendent, just so you can get those extra consumables, extra uses out of those consumables. But again, without a CV, you don't get that. Now, one thing I do want to address, though, is uh, the CV spotting. One thing that I've I've seen devs do it, I've seen uh, just other people in the community say this, too. CV spotting is not per permanent by any means. The only, I will make one exception. The one shipped class that does and can get perma-spotted is a battleship. But again, the thing is you don't you can take damage that's what battleships are designed to do so if you are spotted you can just back up go to your fleet because no cv in the right mind if we are so assuming t10 no cv in the right mind if you are let's say a montana and you're getting proxy spotted if you go to your des moines or you go to your moskva or you go to your grozevoid you know they're going to take care of that aa for you of course the the carrier can't. The uh, friendly carrier can't do much against, like, let's say, empty bombers, because they're the empty bombers are just so much faster. But again, it the perma spotting thing. People are acting like it's against all. Um, I think mainly destroyers. For the most part, it's al almost always battleships. And again, battleships can take uh, that. And there, there's a reason why they've got 12, 13 kilometer spotting. Do you think? Do you really think you won't be perma spotted uh, if you are? within 12 or 13 kilometers of a destroyer, like you're gonna be perma spotted unless you've got smoke or there's an island between your, uh, you and them or you're 13, 14 kilometers away from the battle. So that whole idea of perma spotting, I think is a bad argument. Um, and just to add to that argument, I, I, I recently watched one of my Chapai of uh, Supremacy League gameplay where I was in, I think it was on the map Sea of Fortune, I was uh, I was on uh, C cap, uh, right up next to the cap too. Not like ten kilometers from the cap. I was right next. I was two kilometers from the cap, uh, behind one of the islands. I think on the n north spawn. And then I ended up moving to B. I went through that video. Watched the whole video. It was a twelve minute, uh, twelve minute, and, like forty second video. Um, or that's how long the game lasted for. And I went through and timed how long I was uh, not spotted for. I was spotted for approximately like 8 minutes and like 45 seconds. I was not spotted for 3 quarters of the battle. The only time... I was only spotted for about around 4-ish minutes. And that was from ship detection, like surface detection and air uh, spawning against one of the better CVs in uh, Supremacy League, uh, PSV Deriza. Uh, again, very good CV. Um, but I didn't, I, you know, did that impact me? Yes, no. I mean, it, it did impact me. I had to worry about my positioning and who was aiming at me. But again, I can turn my AA on. I can turn my defensive fire on. I can take care of those planes. If I can't, then I ask my CV to do something about it. If they can't, well, I'm just going to have to live with that or I'm going to have to reposition. There has to be repercussions for uh, you being in a position that is more easily getting spotted by the enemy CV. And again, uh, something else is that the idea of perma spotting. Again, it's not like, unless they, unless you snipe the enemy CV, there's two CVs that you have to worry about. Like, and most of the time, if, like, in a Shikaku, there's, what, two, 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 or three, uh, one, two, so there, you've got six squadrons you have to worry about, plus all the, uh, all your teammates asking for AA cover and all these sort of things. There's a lot of things the CVs have to go through. Um, so, perma spotting, I don't think it's that big of a deal and the only people that really have to worry about it for the most part is battleships um so again i just as a recap um 
it's crazy. Uh, I would prefer T8, uh, but T10 isn't game breaking. Uh, however, I wish there was some some sort of better balance uh, between the classes uh, in terms of the limits that they propose and. The idea of no CV is completely asinine to me. I think it's uh, they should really, really consider what they're doing. Um, because think about this: Would you eliminate a certain class from, let's say, Dota? Like, imagine if uh, they eliminated a certain class from Dota or League of Legends or any other, like Battlefield. If they removed a support class from Battlefield, like it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I don't know how long this has gone on. It seems like 10, 15 minutes, but um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like. Uh, hopefully this wasn't too ranty. Um, but let me know your thoughts down in the comment section down below, and we'll see how it goes. Well, I'll see you guys in the next video.